Hey, hi everybody. I thought that while I'm up here in this beautiful place, I might just uh, make a couple more of our little devotionals and give you the just the beauty of the scenery around me. Um, we were talking about spiritual warfare, talking about what it means to fight a good fight. And we're looking at some of the things that stop us from fighting the fight. And yesterday we had a look at uh, King David, that great warrior king, who traded his uh, his warrior horse, his king's horse, for a, a lazy boy. Looking out the window, it's stuff he shouldn't have looked at, and he got himself into an awful lot of, of trouble. Well, I want to pick up from that theme today because every one of these devotions has got an, uh, an application that you have to try and find and find an application for your, your own life. The principles don't change. The only thing that changes is the application of the principle. Let me give you today another principle of uh, keeping in the fight and keeping yourself going, going well. You know, one of the things that King Saul got wrong, he was David's uh, predecessor, and uh, he messed up a number of times. He got soft on the enemy. At one particular time, he fought a battle. 1 Kings chapter 16, I think it is. He, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, sorry. And he went out to war in specific instructions not to take any prisoners of war. But he took five kings prisoner. And he uh, took all their stuff and he was meant to wipe out the entire place. So when Samuel came, he, he lied. And Samuel basically said to him, Saul, you've taken prisoners of war. You know what God wanted you to do. You know full well that God wanted you and instructed you to wipe out the entire group of these, uh, this enemy. And now look what you have done. He paid for it dearly because this was one of the things that God would not stand for. God had been very specific in his instruction to Saul and Saul got found out. Well, after he got found out, we would like to think that maybe he repented, but I don't think he did. It would indicate that the tears or the crocodile tears of remorse, which sometimes look a little bit like repentance, were what Saul did. But uh, Samuel said to him, Saul, it's just uh, too late. You have taken prisoners of war against the specific instruction of God. Now, here's the application for us so far. In the war that we have spiritually, keeping our minds right, keeping ourselves on focus, keeping ourselves in the fight for the kingdom of God, sometimes we take prisoners of war as well. We take on the prisoner of war of resentment and the unforgiveness or bitterness or anger or lust, or I don't know what the heck it is, but there are so many prisoners of war that we take into our minds. And you know what, people? We may not pay the same price that Saul paid, but man, they take their toll after a while. God would want for us to rid our minds and our hearts from every enemy. Be ruthless with those things. Be ruthless with those things that hold you back. All those things that you know are there. You can hide it from us, but you can't hide it from God. And God knows what your prisoners of war are. Compare that with Joshua. When he took five kings captive, he knew what to do with prisoners of war. And he had those kings wiped out. Now that's the aggressive attitude that maybe we as believers need to have against sinful prisoners of war that we keep in our own minds. Thinking that we're going to be okay. Thinking no one's going to know. But there comes a time when all is revealed. If not now, certainly then. And I hope, people, that you will look into your lives as I will be looking into mine and just see if there are things that maybe displease God, things we're allowing to harbor into our minds or into our hearts, that at the end of the day, we're going to pay a huge price for that. The price right now is we lose our joy. We lose our peace. We lose our passion for the things of God, all because we've kept these prisoners of war. Let's get rid of them. Let's wipe them out. Don't be soft on the devil, people. Jesus wasn't. He stood on his head and he crushed him into the ground. Maybe we need to do the same thing with some of the things that have sort of come into our hearts and into our minds that we know just need to go. One last thing on this. Joshua, when he took over the promised land, even he, as great as a guy as he was, he didn't do a full job. He didn't drive out all the enemies from the land. 
And I would encourage you to go and read the first couple of chapters of the book of Judges and go and see what the consequences were for him because he didn't do that. Huge consequences for the whole nation. I hope you'll take this and apply it as I will be hoping to apply it into my life. But uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, we'll be back uh, very soon now. Have a great day, people. See you soon. Bye.